Hey YouTube, definitely chapstick time. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if not, thank you. Yeah, I got on my teeth. If not, <laughs> thank you for being here now. I appreciate you. I'm working on my lighting. Looking back over the last few videos that I've uploaded, the lighting was really just weird. And it's still weird now because you can see shadows in the back. But at least I'd rather have shadows behind me than shadows coming in and making me look hazy so I purchased two little compact lamps <laughs> the shelf the sticker on the shelf said twenty dollars I bought two and I bought a light for each because they need because it because they're compact lights lamps they needed a smaller base bulb and so I got two bulbs and so when she rang them up she's like oh 1398 and I'm like 1398 she said yeah the lamps are on sale for five dollars a piece Ooh! so I was excited one of the bulbs didn't work I looked at the reviews, which I should have did before I bought the bulbs, and people were saying that some of them worked, some didn't. But anyway, so I have a lamp here, a little lamp there, and it's on my pony wall, so it's not in my way. It's not adding clutter. I turned off the light back here that's here instead of directly behind me because of the way they have it hanging in the so-called dining area. And I put a lamp over here, but that just adds more shadow because there's not a light here so i'm gonna just leave these two here and hopefully when <laughs> i edit and upload this video it will look okay so i'm feeling like i'm so used to my face with no face paint on i'm trying to decide if i want to do a base face before i do another eye look using this palette because i'm still not seeing a lot of looks on youtube with this palette and it may just be because it's so basic. Maybe that's why. But I want to do some more looks so that those of you who do have this palette will have an idea of what you can do with it. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to speed through my base face. And I'm still using the Esom brushes. And so I'm going to do a look using this little quad right here. And maybe this quad here. So it'll be another everyday neutral basic look and then a look with some color to it that's what i'm thinking i'm gonna do i remember i said in the other video i had three more um Esom brushes in my cart on muse beauty pro and i did purchase those brushes so one is the t03 which is an eyeliner brush and i'm concerned because it does seem really soft. I mean, not soft in a, in a bad way. Um, it seems really flexible. That's what I'm trying to say. But if you're putting it through gel liner, it should still give a stiff line. Or if you're using a pressed shadow and you mix it with a mixing medium, it should still adhere enough to stiffen it on the brush to place color on your lash line. And the other two I purchased, this one is the T38. And it's angled. Y'all know I like those angled brushes. And this one is a smaller... I don't know why I even did that. This one is a smaller one of this one. It's angled as well. And this one is the 37. I really, 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 really like the angled um, Real Techniques brushes. The difference is, is this is completely flat where... It fell on the floor. Where this one is rounded. And so for this one, I am able to really pack on. And even if it's a loose pigment, you just do like a press and slight drag or just press and it'll go where you want it. And then I have to gently like angle it to blend it into the crease. Whereas this one I'm thinking is more like the Makeup Forever number 234 straight and wavy brush. Even though this one is more tapered. It still kind of has that flat shape, but it's not as wide. This one, I purchased it to use for concealer to get into my corners. And when I picked it up to use it, I automatically used it for eyeshadow. And I liked how it placed it because, you know, I like those angle brushes. I loved it for packing shadow on. But then I found blending the, the shadow into my crease was really easy as well because of that taper. And so I'm wondering if this is going to function similar to this one, just on a wider scale. I'm going to go get the one that fell on the floor, which is the smaller of this one, and compare that to this. Okay, so where did it go? 
Well, I picked up the small one, but where did the large, oh, here's the larger one. It's blending in because I have all the easel brushes here. So I'm going to do this so that we can see the smaller one. Sorry for that glare against the Makeup Forever one. So it's still, with wise this is a little wider only because it ends up tapered. But I'm thinking it'll function the same way, and so I'm really excited to try that one. Meanwhile, I had also purchased, because I was looking for another angle brush, I had purchased, it was on sale for like $9 and some change on Ulta. This is one of the IT brushes. I have no IT products at all. It says number 137, and it is an, an angle, but it's not um, tapered or flat or anything. So it's not as flat as this one, and it's definitely not as angled as either of these, but it still has a slight angle. And so I was just looking for a smaller um, blending brush or shader brush that had a shape to it. I will say with these two from Eastam, and I apologize for going back and forth, for both of these brushes, they each had one hair or one, one strand of fiber that didn't want to be with the rest of them. This one, it was, no, actually this one had two. Like one was just hanging here and one was <laughs> up here. And so I just cut it off. And this one also had like one fiber somewhere that was just like, hey, I want to go party over here. I don't want to be with the crowd. And so I cut that one off. Other than that, all of the, the Eastern brushes I purchased were in perfect condition. All the hairs were even, well, in this case, even though they're angled, um, you would still expect it to be like, to be leveled, <laughs> the angle to be leveled and not just have like this one fiber going in its own direction. So I'm going to do my base face and I'm already starting to sweat. I don't even have on skincare. Like this is one of those days. I also purchased, um, this might just be a new purchase video cause this is going to be kind of long. I also purchased, um, Excuse me. I also purchased the Hourglass Mechanical Gel Eyeliner. And this color is, this is what it looks like. And the color, which I can't even see it, is right here. So it's like a blue. Let me see what it says. What does it say? It says Ocean Floor. I'm still trying to find something for my inner rooms. And I'm, I'm not wanting to accept... And it's mechanical, so if you, I don't know if you can hear it clicking, so you have to click it for it to come up. I'm not ready to accept, oh, that's a nice color. Even though it says ocean floor, like it's a dark blue, almost black, or like a smoke gray black kind of color. So a strange is called ocean floor, and it does not look like the blue one here at all. It looks almost black. I'm not ready to accept yet that I'm not going to be able to wear color on my inner rims because they're just irritating my eyes too much. The other two things I purchased that I wanted to try again, and I don't remember why I stopped using them, gel eyeliners. So Ulta sells some MAC products, and so I purchased the Black Track MAC Fluid Line. I remember I used to use this way back in the day, like in the late 2000s. And I don't know, I don't remember why I stopped using it. So I purchased this, and I also purchased the Stila Smudge Pot. I remember I used to love Stila. Stila is the first makeup brand that caused me to fall in love with makeup. And I don't remember why I stopped using them. And I think it's because I was having such trouble with liquid liner, it was easier just to take an angled brush such as this one, or an angled brush such as this one, to apply a gel liner and then I found the Lorac front of the pro let me say it right I always say it wrong and I've been using this for years front of the line pro when I started using this liquid liner I was like oh my gosh this is so easy and so I I'm wondering if I stopped using gel liners one because I found a liquid liner that I was able to use without looking a mess and or if I started having problems with waterproof products. And that's part of my issue with doing my inner rooms, especially if it's a waterproof liner, it just dries my skin out so much and it makes my eyes itch and then they tear and it's just not good. 
the smudge pot the smudge pot that is what it's called the Stila <laughs> smudge pot does say it's waterproof and I believe the MAC fluid line claims it's waterproof but it doesn't say on here it's waterproof where on the Stila one it says on the back that it's waterproof and so I'm going to try one on one eye and one on the other and see how that turns out and so those are my new purchases and so I'm going to speed up and go through my base face and again I have on no skincare I washed my face and I ate a late breakfast and then for some reason I was like oh let me just play with this mink set palette again because I'm still not seeing um, videos with that As always, like one brow, like one brow, don't like the other. I just primed my eyes with um, the Fenty eyeshadow primer. I was going to use the Elf Putty Primer, and I realized I've been using this so much. <laughs> And trying it with different brand shadows that I had only been using the Fenty Eye Primer lately to prime under my eyes for concealer. And as you saw, I did not do concealer today. I did use the Isom V50 brush for foundation today. I was watching one of Kelsey's videos, Kelsey Bianca J's videos, and she used this brush for foundation. And I'm like, you know what? Why didn't I think to try that? Because I use this one. This is a blush blush brush also I use this for foundation and so I tried this one and initially I didn't because I thought it would have been too soft but then when I saw her use it I'm like you know what it looked like it worked really well and it actually really did I neglect neglected well, this is dry already to put on um the Bordeaux Bratis blush because I don't know if this will blend it out but we're going to try it really quick because this is a really soft brush I did order two of the e.l.f. Um, cream blushes to try. Um, if you guys have been watching my videos, you know that I have an uh, adverse reaction to nickel. So anytime I hit pan on something, whether it's powder or cream, my face ends up breaking out. This is blending nicely. I enjoy using whatever brush I use for foundation to blend out my blush because you still have foundation color in here and I think it gives it a smoother looking blend instead of using a completely different brush. And so I think it really just helps it to just sink into the skin and eliminate any possible harsh edges. You see that? This side looks like it's more than this side. Do we care? We care a little bit. <laughs> This has nothing on it, so I'm just going to dab my sweat. I can tell, and I remember this being a tacky primer. So I'm going to try to use it the same as the e.l.f. primer, where I'm able to just sweep the shadow across, where historically, not that it's even been that long, when I've used the Fenty primer, I've had to stamp the shadow on and then go in and blend it because it's so tacky, it would just drag the brush across my lid. And so, I'm going to try this with, do I want to try this with this one? Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> let me use a smaller one. I'm going to take this one. This is the <laughs> T37. And we're going to use this little quad here. So, we're going to go with this shade first <laughs> and get this into. When you stamp your brush in, there is like no kick up. And see, it's dragging my skin. So with the Fenty Primer, I definitely <laughs> have to stamp it. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely have to stamp it and then go back in. 
blended. So that's one thing I can say I like about the e.l.f. primer, the e.l.f. eye putty primer. I am able to just put the shadow on the brush and just blend it over versus having to stamp it first and then <laughs> go back and blend it. I'm going to take <laughs> this fluffy brush. This one is the V34 and just try to <laughs> further blend. I had forgotten going in with that same shadow because there's a gap right here. I do miss already not just being able to sweep the shadow on. I can say that. So I do really feel like the e.l.f. putty eye primer will be <laughs> my go-to primer. There is a gap over here. That might be where the brush skipped. Ugh. <laughs> I miss it already. And that's a good sign because the Fenty Primer is 20 something. The e.l.f. is $3. I do really like the Fenty Primer to prime under my eyes for concealer though because it is so tacky and it does help the concealer to adhere and it doesn't crease as much especially when I set it with powder and also putting on additional eye cream underneath before I put on the primer and then the concealer. Alright so that's what we have for that. It's looking patchy. And it's because I tried to sweep it with that first brush. And you guys have seen by now the other videos. If you didn't, I'll link them up below or somewhere. Um, or as an end cap. Where you can go back and see me using these shadows. I did not have any problems at all. Like, I, like I'm having right here in this corner. <laughs> and I don't know why I'm laughing because it's not funny. <laughs> I guess it's just amazing to me how differently these two primers are acting and now I have like a harsh line from why I messed up okay so let me separate before I go forward I don't like using this for blush to stamp in that blush because it dented um, the bristles like you see how this whole brush is just like and it wasn't like that when I just used it for powder to set my face. And so I don't think I'm going to use this again to do this stamping motion because, because it was already wet from the foundation and then from the cream from the blush, it's just sitting. And I do wash my brushes after I use them. So I am confident it will go back to its normal shape. But like right now, look at this brush. Like there's hairs here that's just kind of hanging out and bristles here that's hanging out. And so I'm not liking that. So I will not use this. I will use it for a foundation, but I will not use this to stamp and blush anymore. So we're going to switch to a smaller... No, we're going to do lid. So we're going to take that same brush. Is that the one we used? Just the same brush. The T37. And we're going to take this shade right here. And... We're going to put that in the inner corner with well, the first third of the lid. And this has a mirror, so I don't know why. You know, I'm trying to be careful to not hold it up in glare, so I wasn't using it. These shadows do go on still very nicely, very smoothly. But you definitely have to stamp if you're using <laughs> a really tacky primer like the Fenty Primer. And also I'm liking the e.l.f. putty primer because it also conceals it color corrects because like right here I have a dark patch and using the e.l.f. eye putty primer it conceals that even though I don't like how bright it looks up here in this area I like how it conceals under here and I did order the one in rose this one I believe is the color is cream and so we're going to see if that one gives a different look before I start putting shadow over top of it. And now we're going to go in, oh, let me fold this back. I'm going to go with the bigger brush. <laughs> and we're going to take this purple shade. So we're just using this, these four colors right here. So we're taking this purple shade. When you just kind of wiggle it in, like there's no kick up in the pan. 
And I decided to go with this bigger brush because I'm doing this entire area here. And this covers this area nicely because it is such a big brush. And now that the colors are laid, I can actually sweep back and forth over the Fenty primer. I like this look. Okay, now we're going to take, hmm, I want to use a gel liner, but I want to use this brown. We're going to take this brown and go under the lower lash line, and so I should have taken a smaller brush. I know I just got real quiet. And this brush is soft enough where I can sweep back and forth without it moving my skin too much, especially if I'm holding all the way down near the bottom of the handle. Oh, I think I've poked myself in the eye. So this look is almost done. We're not doing anything for brow bone. I'm going to take that first brush I used, no additional color, and just blend this further up just so there's not so much blank space up here. I was going to say I'll take another color, but I did say I would just stick to that quad. So we're just going to stick to that quad. So this is just to give you some more ideas of what you can do with this palette. So we've used this as a transition, this on the inner third of the lid, this on the remaining lid, and this on lower lash line. So that is this look. And nothing for inner corner highlight, nothing for brow bone highlight. Okay, so we're going to take, <laughs> we're going to try the Real Techniques brush, and we're going to do this little quad over here. So we're going to take this shade first, which is a shimmer. Which one did I say? This one. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't know where I am. I was going to sweep, but it's not, is it going to sweep? It sweeps to a point, <laughs> so, so it gets to where the skin is more loose. When you have extra skin on your lids, like it's a it's a it's a thing. Like you have to really figure out. I think it might have been that brush, or maybe because this had time to dry, the primer on this side had time to dry, because I am able to just sweep it, or maybe because it's a shimmer shade versus a matte shade. I don't know. But I'm never able to just sweep shadow over a fancy primer. I don't think I've used shimmer um, as a transition shade before, but that's what we're working with. It's only one matte in this quad and it's this one over here. So, and this brush did work really well. I'm going to take, what am I going to take? I need a flat brush. I'm going to take this brush. This is the large angled one. T53, and we're going to do this on the first half of the lid and this on the second half. And so I'm just going to wipe off the brush in between. Yeah, this, oh, okay. Uh, the bristles are hitting me on my eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> this brush is huge. But it's covering a wide area, so I'm able to get this done quickly. So that's really nice. Mm, excuse me, I just spit. And I'm going to wipe that off. And go in with this shade. And put that on the second half of the lid. And stamp that on. Mm, I'm liking how this looks. And then slightly blend into the crease a little bit. I'm going to turn it so the, the pointy part is on my lid just to sweep that orange lid color over into the crease a little bit. And now we have one more color over there to use, that peachy shade. I don't know what to do with that one. <laughs> We're going to see what this does as uh, to blend out the, the transition shade. And this is the V33. So hopefully it won't look too pinky. Or too dusty, I should say. 
because I do tend to look dusty, I think, and with cool tone shadows. All right, I'm not liking that. <laughs> I'm going to take this shade right here, <laughs> the one that's the non-shade, perfect blending shade for me, and I'm going to put that where I just put that rose color, that peachy pink rose color. Okay, I like that better. So these are the two looks that we have. And I'm going to uh, take the Steel Smudge Pot and going to take, I didn't do lower lash line. Let me co cover that back up. Oh, and I dropped the lid. Damn it. All right, let me just turn that upside down on something. Lower lash line for this eye. I don't even know what to take over there. We're going to take this shade with this pencil. This pencil. Pencil liner brush. This is the V09. And I'm going to put that under here. And with no additional shadow on it, the brush we used for crease color. I have brushes everywhere. The brush I used to blend that out, um, no, with no additional shadow, I'm just going to blend that so it doesn't have a harsh line. And see how this one is moving my skin, so that's why sometimes you'll see me go like this or like this. And then just very lightly in the middle, because sometimes if I go all the way across, it moves my skin. This side, I Okay, steal a smudge pot. Oh, the lid's on the floor. So we're gonna try it with this T03 Eason brush. It's picking up the color nicely. I do I do still have um, Inglot loose pigments that I can mix with Doriline and use as liner. I just need to remember to do that because that's just an extra step when you have to... I know I just stopped talking. <laughs> When you're trying to do your makeup, that's just like an extra step. I'm deciding, even though I know this is the first time I've used this, if I like this brush or if the bristles are just too long or something. Because my other ones, the bristles are shorter. Even though I like the longer bristles for these kind of brushes because then it's easier to clean and squeeze all the water out after you wash the brush. But the bristles are not staying together like they're spreading out maybe I need more product on the brush yes I don't know yeah the, the bristles are not staying together which is going to affect whether or not I'm able to do a thin line and I'm already messing up doing a thin line because the bristles are spreading out so this um it's not really working for me and that just came out super thick and it's thicker still because it keeps spreading and I'm trying to fix it and it's just making it thicker and thicker so <sighs> this is why I like shopping at like Sephora and Ulta because if something doesn't work you can send it back I think this might have been $18 $20 $22 something like that and it's fine if you want a thick line, but I did not want a thick line. But because the bristles are spreading out, <laughs> it turned into a thick line, and I'm not happy about that. Now I dropped the smudge pot, and it fell upside down on the carpet. Max Black Track Fluid Line. <laughs> We're going to take this angle brush. This is an Inglot. 30T brush <laughs> and we're going to dip in here oh gosh I guess I could compare the length of these two brushes so you can see yeah that brush mm. was well, it's not uh, the bristles are not densely packed If I wasn't doing a shadow look and I just wanted to put on eyeliner and go, that would be great. But because I have slightly hooded eyes, when I have a thick liner, you can't see any color on my lid when I look at you. Where this one, you can still see a little bit of color. 
like over here in the corner and in the inner corner this one you, all you see is just a liner and also if I do liner too thick it may transfer up and up into the crease part because the liner is touching my crease area and so I do have to be careful to do a thin line and that brush is not well I should say did not I'll play with it some more because that was my first time using it but it did not allow me to do what I wanted to do where this angle brush I love it so you see the differences in the line I can even if you can't so just as a quick <laughs> comparison I'm gonna hold this so it doesn't glare at you but you see how am I holding it equal yeah so you see how much longer so I have the ferrule in the same place and you see how much longer I'm trying to see and let you guys see <laughs> see how much longer the bristles are on this brush than the angled brush and so like I said I'll keep playing with it and we'll see what we can do with that oh last thing oh this video is super long uh, this eyeliner from Hourglass. Why is my eye red? You know it from when I poke myself in the eye. That's why it's red. This goes on very easily. A very thin line. I'm not used to using mechanical pencil gel liners. It's interesting. And I don't want to turn it up too far because you cannot turn it back down. It goes on really easily though. But because it is such a thin line, you have to keep going back and forth to cover up space. because the width of the pencil part is only half of the width of my waterline. I don't even know if that's making a difference. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. So I'll have to see if my eyes like that and also the gel liners. And so that is it for this look. Nothing on this brush. Fenty Cream Gloss Balm in Cookie Jar, just for giggles. I do like this color. I just didn't realize that it had like an orange base to it before I purchased it. I would have preferred a little more brown like the hot chocolate um, regular gloss bomb. So this is a look. No mascara because the video is over and I'm sweating and I got to pick up my smudge pot. So let me know what you think of this look using a quad <laughs> from the Viseart Mink Set Itendu palette and then using another quad from that same palette to do a really everyday neutral they're not there go anywhere I look so this is what we have and so thank you for watching